you know, we come here with good gear. We always put our faith in the product. That's why we build it the way we do. We know, you know, that it's going to perform. And to see what it's done on this trip, yeah, it's blowing me away. There's truly nowhere else in the country where you can test it in, in such harsh conditions in terms of slow, off camber sort of driving. You know, we've got river crossings, creek crossings, boulders, rocks, mud, clay, you name it, it's here. Then you've got to worry about trees. I think the more time we all spend touring and using our products, uh, for us now is more coming down to the usability of our products, how, how we can make them to be used better out in this type of touring. There's a lot of um, talk about you know, Australian manufacturing disappearing, but to me, I just see it getting stronger and stronger, and it's with brands like Zone RV, where you know, they're taking the time to get out here and test their products and keep you know, pushing the boundaries of what they're capable of, you know, all in the aim of just helping us as explorers just get out there and experience this amazing country. Frosty cold start this morning. We ticked off a lot yesterday, you know, we, we went and did the, all the crests and it was an amazing trip. So <clears throat> now it's a little bit of sightseeing and we really want to go to Craig's Hut. So that's the plan. We're going to start heading that way and then try and take it off our way across the high country. Yeah, look, it was a bit of a slow start. We really didn't know what we were doing when we were leaving Willis Creek. Um, I think the key thing was that we're probably a bit light on, on our packing, so we didn't have enough supplies. You don't mind, Matthew, do you think you could um, potentially do some better calculations of the milk next time we're planning for a trip? Thanks, mate. I don't like running out of coffee. Yeah, you're right, sorry, mate. It looks like it's coincided with you using too much fuel, so I guess uh, it's not so bad that we have to go to the main road anyway and go and get some supplies, but certainly the morning coffee is lacking today. Feel a bit sad leaving this area and heading down south. I feel like uh, this is probably the um, could be wrong, but the pick of the uh, nice quiet area up the top here. Yeah, it's certainly been lucky with the amount of people we've seen. I haven't seen many humans and had the tracks to ourselves. That's been nice. Hopefully uh, that continues. If we probably tallied up all the cars we've passed going the opposite way in the last three days, I think it's probably lucky if it got to ten. Yeah, we've been pretty lucky with that. It's probably been about 10 cars, so, um, mate, fingers crossed it stays that way. Let's hope so. I guess from the sounds of things, what we're saying is that New South Wales high country is better than Victoria high country, though, Nick. Is that what you're confirming? 100% not, mate. Everything you've seen so far that you've fallen in love with has been good old Victoria. Uh, not 100% sure on that, but uh, we'll let you have it. So it was a bit of a cruisy day. We, we, we made our way up to Hotham and um, checked out the, the ski resort up there while there's no snow around and it's a bit of a ghost town. Yeah, that whole area is just spectacular. The elevation and the outlook, it's rolling hills everywhere. Yeah, it's eye candy. How great is this Great Alpine Road, boys, with the view? pretty special it's sort of like where, where we were for the last few days it was all just super rough roads at 5k's an hour and in this spot they've uh, they've just bitumened across the top of all the ridges so it's um either way it's a pretty amazing drive yeah definitely spectacular Ryan. nice to be up here nick what's uh, what's the rest of it going to hold for us today you reckon you spend a bit of time around here ultimately trying to head sort of southwest um sort of bogong high plains road so yeah fingers crossed it's open and we can get through yeah, that'd be nice. That sort of leads us back down into the into the high country away from civilization. Yeah, back onto the dirt road, you can sort of head through, you bypass or along the side of Wanangatta Valley and, and the river there, which is pretty famous, and then, um, yeah, it's head towards uh, Buller and Mansfield. Sounds good. Craig's hut. Yep. Well and truly before sunset tonight, so we can uh, get a good setup and uh, get ready for a good cook-up. 
Yeah, I reckon that may be a bit difficult. We'll see how we go. Um, what is it? It's 10 to 2 at the moment, and the track out there is usually pretty rough, but um, it's a heap of fun. And we're just going to stop up on the left, boys, and uh, get the maps out and see what we're doing. To get right across to the Mansfield cobbler side, it's genuinely, usually you've got to go around Buffalo or come back down the way we were supposed to go, but I think with the fires, we'll see what Maddie comes up with. So it just as the majority of the falls of the Southern High Plain Alps area and Alpine National Park remain closed due to bushfires, which is down here, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty big area. But yeah, but we just want to figure out a way that we can transverse this area yep. to here. Yeah. We, I think we still got to find somewhere hard to push that 18 footer. Mm. So. Well, I think, yeah, the thing we've got to be careful is that narrow width tracks. Yeah, uh, that's, the trees, yeah. that's not pushing it, that's just yeah. breaking it. So we just got to get steep inclines with width. <laughs> <laughs> Any caravan, yeah. off-road caravanning tracks here, mate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I think the idea now with having uh, the road closure here where we're at, guys, I reckon we scout out the front, maybe I go out front or Rob goes out the front. We have a look at um, Guns Track. If we can get up Guns Track with the 18 foot 6, we we'll push on down Pheasant Creek track, and the aim is tonight really to set up camp here in the Buckland Valley. From the Buckland Valley, we'll, then we can decide which way we want to head down, and we're really going to have to hightail it out to our Craig's Hut, so there's a fair bit of um, off-road work for us tomorrow. So essentially we're going from here, the hardest way you could possibly think of to get across the here with a caravan. Yes. <laughs> That's open. Yeah. yeah, and try and get some trout along the way. So, right. Yippee! Well, can right. you trawl for trout behind a caravan? <laughs> <laughs> boys were adamant they wanted to cross the Buckland Valley so um and I really wanted to go around it so um plus I really wanted a beer from the Bright Brewery but that's something separate but um yeah so we decided to cut across the Buckland Valley. We tested the Expedition Series with the Amarok. We hadn't tested uh you know the 79 Series and, and the 18 foot 6 so you know we managed to do that pretty pretty quickly. So, Nick, is this actually Demon Ridge track now? Uh, no, we've taken West Ovens out of uh, Harrietville, and then we're on to Albion. We come into Demon Ridge, we turn left, or it's about west, and then we jump onto Pheasant Creek, and heading down to Buckland Spur, fingers crossed. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty tricky through here. Right? There's a lot of tracks, and obviously our main goal is to try and get west, but it's, uh, she's winding to get west. Yeah, they've definitely made it tough for the 18 foot 6. Um, you seem to be cruising along, mate, but um, yeah, some of these tracks are pretty tight and narrow. It's really hard to pick which one's going to be better. It's probably the hardest thing we've got to deal with here is the width and the height of that thing. Seems like the uh, 79 does it all right, eh, Dave? Yeah, mostly. So far, so good. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what's ahead. So it sounds to me like we're sort of going to take the long way here, thinking that it's going to be a bit easier, is that right? Yeah, it's kind of, it's not really the long way. There's not really a short way, so they're all, they're all pretty long. So if we're going left, it's going to be super tight hip in left. Is Far out. That's pretty tight for Dave. No way. He's going to make that with the, with the trailer. Action. All right, mate. Give it a crack. I'm around. Give it a crack. I reckon uh, Matt could make it in one swing if he drives an Amarok. I feel like he's got zero chance of making that actually. Yeah, you got no chance. You can go wide there. That's my back left for you, is it? It seems to be a bit of a drama though, he tried. I'm not sure you want any lockers on, Frank. Can you move up, mate? So, um, I reckon you can make it, Dave. It'll look pretty good for the agility if you can. You have to get way right, and then you've got a bit of it. Yeah, boys. 
Yeah, mate, a bit of a little tight left-hander. I sort of just snuck around. We got the max tracks under the back corner to get it up over a little sort of 800 mil jump up, but everyone pitched in and we made it around the corner, just. You gotta go up, up the range first, and obviously, yeah, it was pretty steep, loose, tight, you know, everything you could think of. We're running out of time. Just wide enough for the van, but it just turned into some pretty steep inclines, some really tight tracks, you know, that turned into some pretty, pretty steep ascent. I'm coming up. Probably one of my funnest afternoons of four wheel driving through here because it was definitely an unknown track and and you know potentially one of the hardest for me. That's that's the only spot I got stuck on a really big incline there where I just couldn't get traction. I reckon maybe max tracks. Jump out, chuck a max tracks on the probably under the back. Uh, no, I got a bit on up the hill, but I'm getting there. What's the go, boys? Yeah, we've just aired down to 15. Um, we're in low first, got both lockers in, and uh, just going to try and just give it full berries in first. Oh, I was going to say, you probably need uh, more torque punching the second. Can you do a stall up in second, a run up? Yeah, I can, but it doesn't like dropping down into first without having too many revs, and then that's where I don't want to stop. Anyway, I'll give it a go. Yeah, and just go crazy on that wheel, mate. Left and right, find some traction. Go, There's no snatch, so it's just a toe. Um, you just keep the tension on the on the strap so we don't jerk too much. Start turning wheels. Yep. Start, yep. Go, go. I feel like it was lunchtime when we got to this hill and when we just got up, we've always to hike up the hill. <laughs> Shows you the team of athletes that we got dealing with this program, but it's a bit steep and a bit slippery for the for the big girls, so range of the rescue. Tied them up. Almost got exactly the right recovery equipment to get the job done, so. Onwards and uh, downwards from here, actually, down to the valley, hopefully find a uh, campsite before midnight, so we gotta go. We pushed it that day, you know. It was supposed to be a bit of a travelling day, and that's what it really turned into. And we, you know, we were we were into the night for sure. And again, you know, we're talking about vehicle setup. You know, we've all got what Dave does, but it doesn't seem to work. Really good lighting, yeah, you know, and that's an absolute feature when you're doing that stuff. You know, making sure you can see where you're going. Full driving in the dark, uh, it just makes everything a lot more difficult. Yeah, it was um, it was a pretty cool pretty cool trip back. I think the boys, it was something unique for them. They've never done anything like that. Coming down. It's actually harder than the going up here. It's just a bit loose there, John Z, but um, it looks pretty good. I think off camber to the left. Copy. It's just hard with the trailer. Push it. Oh, yeah, she's sliding. Oh, we all fully sliding there, John Z. Yeah. Just keep the 
So it's <laughs> sort of clicking them up every now and then. Yeah, right now the uh, be nice to have another set of axles like big old Davy Bear in the back there. Real shaly here, mate. Rocky and off camber. So it's any steeper than this, I'm gonna need help with it. It's full lock up or six wheels. It's probably a good time to talk about the tyres because if they were uh, if they weren't as good as tyres, um, I'd say that probably would have been in a bit of a pile at the bottom of the hill there. In this sort of terrain, putting the uh, the muddies on STT Pros, I reckon already we've shown just how essential they are when you're actually going to use the campers and the vans off-road. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what, you would not be doing this in the wet, no chance. I felt really comfortable in the 79 in the big van, obviously a lot of rubber with a, you know, a lot of weight down and I, I had my, my brakes really nicely balanced in, in low range first and found it quite comfortable going down those tricky uh, descents, but I, I was sitting behind Matt and I consistently saw the smaller van locking up wheels. Descents, and for me, that was that was a bit of an eye-opener, you know. I haven't done this stuff before, definitely not towing. And, uh, you know, coming down that slippery hill, um, you know, in the dark with the Expedition Series, you know, really sort of helping me down the hill was, uh, you yeah, know, I was a bit on edge, I must I must be honest. I know it's uh, late and we've, we've uh, missed our early set-up camp in some glamorous little position on the river but this has been a pretty good track to go up and uh, definitely been a fair bit of fun telling this 18.6. Wow, well, I think the question mark after yesterday was leaving that behind and the Amarok taking the uh, expedition, the expedition just dominating was, you know, what's the 18 going to be capable of behind your truck and definitely found the limit there. Yeah, and that's probably just goes to show, you know, you got truck like yours and it tows that expedition beautifully like that's a good setup in this part of the world and you get something a bit bigger like the 79 you know with a bit of work done to it and you hook an 18 foot six on behind it and it's a pretty actually very comfortable bit of gear to tow around out here you wouldn't be leaving in a hurry that's for sure with that setup it's certainly late tonight uh still can't really get my head around how we're taking this big off-road caravan through these tracks you know it's dense forest and it's up and it's down and um yeah we've just opened the door on that thing and you know we're straight in getting stuff out of the fridge and you know she's in great shape and it's the same with this and it's um you know it's absolutely the uh, the vehicles that seem to be the limiting factor so yeah another day tomorrow um we got to keep heading west it's sort of one of these things that we do i guess trying to transverse places quickly but um yeah i mean i'm pretty fixated on craig's heart so fingers crossed we can make that happen but yeah high country amazing Beautiful creek where we camped up last night, and this uh, expedition series have all got a uh, creek pool system on them. So, you basically use the onboard pump to pour water into the van, and then wear hot water showers as long as you like. So, she's a, a bit of a treat here. Um, there are some smelly uh, boys around the team, so it's a, more of a treat for our nostrils than anything else. But I mean, this is the capability of the thing, you know, like we're fully off grid here in the middle of nowhere, and we're about to have pretty much endless hot water showers. So, pretty happy about that, I have to say. Breakfast, perfect spot. And then we're uh, basically prioritizing two things for the rest of the trip. Craig's up for me, finding fish for Dave. So I think mine's likely. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see who wins. Cool, how's that? Perfect camp spot last night, eh? A nice little uh, river wash this morning for most of the team. And Felt like we conquered the mountains yesterday you know, with the big van up and over and some really challenging technical tracks. Still, uh, you know, pushing for the Craig's Hut dream and probably running out of a bit of time. Well, mate, we sort of came on this trip to tick two boxes. One, to see your uh, childhood dream movie location, Craig's Hut, and for me to catch a uh, mighty Victorian trout. Uh, we've got 36 hours left on this trip, mate, so... Um, we got a long way to go to Craig's hut and uh, 
not sure I'm feeling any better about getting the trout, so one way or another we need to pull some rabbits out of some bags today, mate. You gotta fix some lures here, brother, to catch some trout. That's it. I think we need to get the numbers game up, eh? And uh, if we're seeing any spots where we think we might be able to get something, we need to uh, we need to be dropping some lines in, eh? Hippy was just saying he'd heard from a patron of his that it was a really good uh, trout fishing hole out in uh, Brighton. Happens to be right across from the Bright Brewery. Strange. Seems fishy. So let's let's get ourselves a trout and, and a couple of maps that I have say, so, you know, these are great trout spots. Stop number one on the great fishing tour of um, Victorian high country. I'm doing the right thing and having a coffee, but the boys are putting little, uh, little lures in and trying to catch some trout, I think. Anyway, what's supposed to be happening, but Dave's just on the phone, so. Who knows? I think my one's going to be ticked off, Craig's hut, Dave's. Still unlikely. Just having a flick down at Nug Nug Creek. Looks like we've got some deeper water here, a few good little structures and a um, bit of water movement. So having a flick around with um, some little spinners and see if we can get something for dinner tonight. Lots of nice, fresh, clear creeks around. We had our fishing gear, did our fair share of casting, but uh, to be honest, I actually didn't see a fish in any of the fresh water, so I get a little uh, dis disheartened when I can't see the fish that I'm actually trying to catch first. Look, it helped Dave, he actually threw his line in the water. <laughs> so I think he wants him to jump on the pan. Sitting up here fishing, no fish. No fish? No fish. Calling the fish. Our last opportunity, we think, is Lake Cobbler for good fish. Lake Cobbler puts us down in here, right? Objective tomorrow, Craig's Hut's up in here. Issue we've got, on the way up through here, there's a thing called the staircase. Pretty renowned in the high country, is a bit of a difficult track to get up, right? Switchbacks and stuff, so we're gonna scout that this afternoon, hopefully. And then there's another one down here called Monuments Track, which is another one that's pretty known in the high country. And that's how, that's gonna be our approach to Craig's Hut. Looks challenging. Does, eh? Nick's shaking his head, so that means we've got to do it. <laughs> I'm quickly getting this piece in because Nick's not here. So the, the trip into Cobbler's pretty easy. There's yeah, a bit yeah. of dirt at the end. And then we're uh, we're a full nail tomorrow, basically. She's going to be a challenge. Sounds good. Yeah. The big girl, a couple of tight corners again. You good with that, Tadic? If it's been graded, you can do it. But if it hasn't, you see like standard Prados with lockers wouldn't get up there with some tyres on their own without towing. So basically I'm for going catching trout so that we can get to Craig's hut for Matthew. It's been a lifelong dream. Thanks Dad. It was at that point in time there where I said let's uh, let's forgo my trout fishing time to Matthew so that we could uh, make Matt's lifelong dream of coming to Craig's hut a reality for him. Yeah, you know, I think there was a bit of a watershed moment early afternoon when we were looking at the map going, you know, we really want to get to Craig's hut from here. and. Yeah, this fishing thing's getting in the way. Um, we got basically three options. One of them was to drive the whole way around on tarmac. It was, I was having none of that. Um, the second one was to drive an easier track, probably further. And the third one was the one that we ended up taking. I'm not sure how I convinced everyone because there was a lot of head shaking. Looks like we're nearly at Lake Gobbler. Oh, I can taste it now. What is the uh, possibility of a trout up here, do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both of us are cracking up. So, same likelihood as the rest of the trip. Oh, come on, mate, no. We're so high and we're coming up to a lake and there are, like it says on the map, there's supposed to be fish up here. Yeah, it's pretty insane. I reckon we're about 13, 1400 meters up and you got this special little lake covered or surrounded by uh, reeds. Uh, it's pretty cool to get a canoe out and I've seen guys throw a line in, but I've never believed there were fish in there. So, who knows how they got there. Yeah, we headed to Lake Cobbler and, you know, that, that was pretty disappointing. I said to the guys, uh, the camping at Lake Cobbler is, yeah, really, really ordinary. It's just muddy, but the view up there to see how they've dammed a swamp at the top of a mountain, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty epic.
So we started full recce, Nick and I, and uh, Rob off the staircase, which is a pretty technical little bit of track with some switchbacks and drops and, um, you know, probably something you don't really want to take a, well, you don't want to take a full-size caravan on. Um, you know, we're well prepared, but obviously checking the track's important, so we've just done a full recce of that. Um, but at the same time, on the way back, we found a really nice campsite. Um, yeah, it's a bit dusty here, and um, it means that we're closer to the track in the morning, which means that we're going to hold less people up so we can do it really early. So we're going to move up the hill. Dave and Raph are heading up there now. Nick and Matt, uh, how do you reckon I'm looking for getting up the hill in the morning? <laughs> uh, it's downhill. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, mate, she's steep. Lots of sharp turns. Um, look, to be honest, I think the, the track from what we've seen on this trip so far, you'll be fine. Um, there is some clearing that we're going to have to do. I think there's a bit of track maintenance required. Um, and yeah, potentially a couple of little sticky spots with um, the van needing to be held back while you, you get a better angle to turn around the corner. Corner, I think he's uh, painting a prettier picture, but mate, I reckon you'll get around there pretty easy. Uh, without the rain, I think you'll be fine. This dual axle trailer, the 18 foot six, is just magic to follow, so it seems like you get heaps of grip. Yeah, right, eh? And seems you guys dragged us all the way up this rabbit hole and it's pretty well, well my only way out. What's uh, what's going to happen if we see any other traffic? And, uh, is there going to be someone giving me the finger or what? Yeah, look, I think the key defence there is that we'll be trying to roll before 6 o'clock um, and we're just going to have to run the radios on scan and make sure uh, we get any chatter that people are aware that we're coming down. We're going to be able to get Princess Matthew Johns out of bed by that time? Mate, I'm pretty sure you're the one that struggles with that, to be honest. Come on, mate. Just relax. <laughs> <laughs> we found that gorgeous spot. It was a nice grassy spot on top of a hill. I uh, really even had pre-cut firewood. So, look, I hit a mate of mine up, Matt Hepburn. He's a part owner of uh, Your Mates Brewery. Legend of a bloke. I said, hey, mate, going to high country. I know you love the outdoors and fishing. You want to come catch a trout? And um, his thank you was to supply all us free beer, free Larry's. So um, yeah, we had Larry's all, all weeks. Well, what sort of trip is it if you don't have a few good coldies? Yeah, you know, starting off this morning, you know, the last day in the high country, doing the staircase, you know, on the way down after we'd done the recce the night before, we knew it was going to be hard, you know, it was steep and there were drop-offs and switchbacks and some unknowns with the width of the van and the length of the car. And Rob called on some of his mates, who's a bit of a legend around these parts. He wasn't that confident that we were going to maybe make it through here with the big van. So, said, oh, what do you think the chances are of getting a, either a van or a trailer down the staircase or back up the monument track? And we kind of laughed. All right, boys. So she's last hop really to Craig's hut. This yep. is where we camped up here, the yarrow. Yep. The yellow line's what we wrecked yesterday. And this is the section here, the staircase, which is pretty pretty well known mm -hmm. here. And that's probably where we've got some question marks over getting the big van down some steps mm -hmm. and corners and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some pretty serious stuff early, eh? Yeah. And then yeah. later on down the track, there's a bit of high stuff. Well, I'll stay up front with the camera crew. Um, keep the keep calling the track ahead. Yep. And um, make sure there's no oncoming traffic, which yep. we should be down before. Yep. Most of the others even get up. Sweet. Sounds good. All right, we'll keep it rolling. Everyone got their shoelaces done, right? Yeah, shoelaces <laughs> done. Good luck, boys. Well, this is it, boys. The staircase. Early morning start. The sun's not up. And uh, the challenge is on. We're really into it, mate. So basically, I'm putting good judgment in some of your estimating skills, boys. You came and did the recce on this, and you're telling me I can do it. I don't want to be the one looking like I've got pie on my face, all right? How many times are you giving us the bum steer on a track, Dave? Still here today, buddy. <laughs> yeah, Dave, this is known as one of the one of the hardest tracks in the high country, mate, so I'd be very doubtful if anyone's taken an 18 foot six caravan down here before. So, yeah, breaking ground, mate. Be real careful. She's pretty much the hardest road you'll ever drive. And basically the staircase is a series of razorbacks, which there's heaps of them around this whole area. It's a, it's a steep mountain where they've got to cut in and out, and it's the, it's the turning the circle, which is the, the hard bit. Um, and the 79 series uh, doesn't have a great turning circle. I and mean, when you put a, a bigger van with an extended drawbar on the back of it, it makes it even more difficult. All right, boys. This is the, uh, the rocky step section of the track. Uh, no problem coming down yesterday with the vehicle only, but obviously a bit different with the trailer. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, 
I think it'll be alright. The only thing is it might be good to walk with the big van to make sure it's not going to drop the drawbar on anything. Just like a chocolate milkshake, only crunchy. <laughs> nice work, mate. Uh, probably the, the most difficult bit coming up, Bigsy. Looks like there's a big uh, a big tree that's been cut in half and it looks tight, like it's vehicle tight, so might have a bit of work to do here. And Dave, you've got to approach it fairly um, far right because there is a tree on the left there. Nice work, Jonesy. The trailer's got about 200 mil to the left. You can go. You're through, brother. All right, what's... Well, uh... We'll set up for a spotter each side to her. Yeah, copy. Are you good? Are we clear on the right there? You yeah. can see the right. I can see the right. I can't. Just talk to me on the left. Yeah, you're all good. Just keep it rolling slowly. All good, man. All good. Keep going. Yeah. Clear. Yep. Right there. Start going hard left. Is my back end clear? Took a pretty easy approach, Dave. Um, there are trees on the outside of the corner, which could make your arc a bit harder. Copy, watching the back end of the corner. I think you'd be right, mate. There's yeah. a little bit of loose rock and stuff, but it's probably okay. Yeah, that's it. Just stay wide at the exit of the corner. There is a big boulder on your left. Put the van pretty sideways. Nicely done, Big Z. Smooth as silk. My well, grandma's knitting needle. Good to see you know, the energetic, lively Matt, who's just feels like, no, we're invincible. We can just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, and that's how he gets the best out of his product and the team. And then um, you know, Dave's the you know the understated legend who just um, pulls that 18 foot six van with a 79. Um, anywhere we want to put it. I think by the end of the trip what ends up happening is Dave gets really comfortable with his, with his car and, and the van and, and you know hats off to Dave, he did an amazing job steering that down the hill. A big 18 foot 6 just ate it up. A tree that's down across the road, it's pretty much halfway into the middle of the road and we're going to have to figure out if we're going to ramp it or cut it or drive around it. Do you want to do an early um, person each side? watching and uh, if it looks too tight then we'll do something about it. Yeah, Raf's uh, doing some clearing. Oh. Even I've got a bit on here, eh? Nice work, mate. Well done. Looks like uh, horsepower made up for ability on that one again, eh? Sure did. Yeah, we can't underestimate that those are low tire pressures and those big swing arms um, definitely help you get through a couple of those tight spots. So what have we done? An hour and a half, probably about five k's? I don't think we've done five k's. Uh, the Amarok's saying we've done two kilometres. <laughs> there you go, two k's in almost one and a half hours. Probably our slowest ever speed time continuum. Definitely hasn't been any um, high trailers through here in a long time, eh? There's a lot of overgrowth on the up high. Actually, the biggest thing to come up here is the LC79 with David Biggest beard in it, and that's 18 foot 6 off road zone. Oh well, boys, looks like we got through the staircase. Oh, it's a good drive, well done team. I think it's fairly safe to say we've conquered the high country really. <laughs> a very small portion of it mate. No, I think we've conquered it all. Thanks high country. North to south, high country. East to west, north to south. 
the bottom of Speculation Road, which means that we've uh, we've made it down the staircase and you know, everything's in really good condition. We haven't damaged anything, which is nice. Got a little tricky sections there, but uh, you know I think we were well prepared. We did check the track first, and uh, you know we've left nice and early, so we haven't encountered any other people that were holding up. But we're not done yet. We still got to get to Craig's hut. We're running out of time. People are getting out of bed. Uh, moisture on the windscreen doesn't look good, eh? You can hear there's a few big black clouds coming through. Yeah, it could really put a damper on things. We're still going to do a bit of a climb, oh, a mega climb, monuments if we can. So hopefully she stays away because it could be uh, our biggest challenge yet. Hey, monument track when it's wet, it's a pretty epic track. Like it used to be um, back in the day, a twin locker track when it was wet. Let's keep the faith, boys. Let's keep working. We've just made it all the way to the start of the monument track and um, yeah, we just heard that uh, as it was started rolling, air spraying out, but we've sort of got the whole sidewalls let go. I've had a couple of little slashes in my sidewalls. I've probably been a little bit laxy daisy about leaving them on there, but this one's finally gone. Almost out of the track. Probably better than a blowout on the highway, so all good. Yeah, bottom of monument track. Um, all reports are that it's pretty hard, so I thought they would just whip up quickly um, and check it out, basically. Yeah. See if it's going to be trailer suitable or not. Well, yeah, generally it's not, but um, yeah, it's deep, rocky, and there's a fair few hairy switchbacks, so we'll go up and do a bit of a recce. Johnsy started pushing me, we've got to do monument track. He told me that's a hard way up. I said, yep, that's a hard way up. So we did a bit of a recce there, and it's been graded, so the boys are just so lucky. So it's still, still difficult. Like, uh, I wouldn't recommend towing a van or a camper up there. It'd be absolutely crazy, especially on your own. You are going to be a nuisance. We're not sitting there saying bring your caravan into the high country. Like, you know, there are areas you can get to easily. The rest of the stuff we've done, you're crazy, you know? Like, <laughs> Nick, that was the easier one of the two or three? Uh, this one next, I think that's the monumental one. Maybe that's why they call it monument track, eh? No, she's a monumental right-hander. It's uh, a little bit off camber, lots of rock, slippery and steep, so. Oh, we'll give it our best shot. All we can do is try. Just take it far left, then it'll look right, mate, and then give it the berries. Copy, inbound. Yeah, boys. Nice drive, mate. Nice drive. Yeah, boys. sitting around going, you know, yeah, there's a sense of achievement again with this one, you know, making it here. Monuments track sure it's in good condition. A pretty strong sign at the bottom that says it's not suitable for trailers. I'd agree, you know, it's not suitable for trailers. Is it zone? Yeah, sure, but not trailers. The concept of bringing a caravan up here, I was just thinking, what are you guys thinking? You try to pull a stunt or you're actually really product testing? I've had a really big paradigm shift on this trip, just seeing uh, where you can actually get an 18 foot six caravan. Probably not really shifted my concept of where I want to take a caravan or I want to see caravans start to you know, clog up our awesome four-wheel drive tracks, but, but the concept of pushing into a, a beautiful deep valley, um, setting up camp there for a few days with all the comforts and um, pushing up into the hills with your four-wheel drive is just, uh, it's just magic. Oh boys, just sitting at the bottom of the hill waiting to go up to Craig's hut. Sorry, it's a little bit selfish to drag you all the way across here, but uh, you know, she's an iconic one. This, uh, the route that we've taken and the challenges we've just ticked off has been pretty good. Yeah, 
Yeah, told you boys, it just gets better, this high country, and there's still heaps more to do. Good to love it. Obviously there's some easy ways to get into Craig's hut. We didn't take the easy way. For anybody who comes here, it's a truly spectacular view out the back there. And old, uh, old Craig definitely had a nice perch on the uh, top of the hill, that's for sure. Until a suddenly buster comes through and cleans you up, or a bushfire. There we are. The beds are longer. The smell is a little more pungent. Uh, but what a trip. It's been absolutely amazing. It's probably more than we could have ever hoped for, you know. We came in with I guess uh, some parameters on what we wanted to do to test the product. Um, you know, get the product in its, in its uh, natural environment and really use it for what it's made for. And, you know, we ticked those boxes probably in the first day and then we were going, well, what are we going to do now? And we've actually done some pretty extensive touring through the high country. And There's been nothing short of spectacular to look at around here. You know, you're climbing from one mountain top to another and uh, to be able to drag the, the big van up and do what we did was, was great. One, just for, you know, it was actually just good fun being able to do that, but sort of really push that big van and uh, see what its limitations were. And we probably didn't fully find that down here at this point. We'll be driving out of the high country this afternoon, getting back on the highway with uh, not really any jobs list to do on these vans. They've, they've held up really well. Maybe a tyre or two to repair on your truck, but you know. Maybe a tyre for my bad driving. <laughs> we've been here really testing the Zoo product as well. We've got the new um, production expedition series. Um, you know, your truck with the canopy, the prototype there. And yeah. you know, I've towed that expedition series the whole way. Um, you know, absolutely know f for a fact that it's the vehicle that's going to be the limitation there. That thing has handled absolutely everything. Yeah. It's been bouncing on one wheel. It's just been everywhere. And you know, it's so critical for our product. Product, um, you know, the new product, the current product, we know that we're building you know, the best caravan that you can buy in Australia. The off-road capability of the 18-foot bunk van is just phenomenal. You know, the touring really, it's never been easier and it's never been more fun. So the high country has just absolutely been one that we'll never forget. And... No, but I don't think we've touched the sides. I think we're going to have to come back probably this time next year because there's a lot to see. Maybe a bit of white stuff on the ground, throw a bit more challenge in there, but yeah. It's been epic. The high country, you've got to get down here. Make sure you bring good gear and some good support and, and really plan it out well. And that's what we've done. What a success. Back to the office. <laughs>